The allies, yep, Panzer Grenadier is just gonna stand in the circle to prevent the, the full cap. Oh, he popped the launcher off the top to create a Sherman. Oh, wow. Hey, everyone. Shark here, with an absolutely savage 2v2 between two high-level range teams on the map Campbell's Convoy. Playing as allies, we have two USF players from the Republic of Korea, Philikim, an American Association president. Playing as the Axis, we have Dumai and Dexon. Dumai playing as the DAC and Dexon playing as the Wehrmacht. This match features a lot of the things that make 2v2s just a little bit different from 1v1s, especially at super high level. So if you like big team pushes and lots of artillery, this is one you want to watch. Casting this one with me is my boy Sarge from the Sarge GG channel and Discord. As always, links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. Hey everyone, so we got a really high level 2v2 for you today. Starting at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have the Axis team of Dumai and Dexon. Uh, and then at the, the top of the screen, I know I already rotated it and screwed you up, Sarge, but uh, at the top of the screen, we got a dual US team, both players from Korea. Uh, one is Philikim, and the other one, I don't read Korean, I'm told it means American Association President. So I'll probably call him AAP. Uh, casting with me, as I mentioned earlier, is my boy uh, Sarge. Sarge, how are you doing today, man? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Excited to cast some code during this uh, free weekend that just dropped. So shout out to all the new players out there. I really hope you guys enjoy the match. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm trying. Uh, so Q Replay and Zany built this overlay at the bottom, which will allow us to keep a little bit more visibility on the 2v2. So I'm excited to try this out as well. Yeah, it should be a high level match. Um, I'm actually learning Korean right now. So yeah, this was a mouthful to try and read. But uh, let's see what he's got. Yeah. So both uh, both teams kind of going for uh, the fuel setup. I mean, this is pretty standard. Campbell's Convoy, I really like this map. It plays very open, but there are definitely three main lanes. Um, got a crowd shooting out for the DAC player. And then for uh, the Wehrmacht player, Grenadier into MG42 with the second Pioneer for capping and utility. Which is interesting. I've yeah. seen some higher level players doing that recently, like double pioneers rather than a Kettenkrod. Um, and I wonder uh, if that's just because the pioneers have a little bit higher DPS than they used to. Um, but otherwise, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I like opening this way for the capping power. Um, it, I, I find that it's pretty strong and it allows you to have the added utility of barbed wire and mines um, as well for the MG. But in the bottom, we have a Jeep now pushing up towards the south with the Rifleman, who's now pushing up against, looks like the Grenadier and the MG. So we got a bit of a convergence in the bottom. And at the top, we've got the Grens and the crowd shoots and engaging as well. Yeah, so fight over this high munitions point, like you pointed out. Um, MG42 immediately suppresses the Rifleman on the, uh, the left side of the map here. Jeep's in place. The rifleman's suppressed. The grenadiers are gonna do, gonna do a little better than you'd expect. Uh, scouts trying to decap the Axis fuel here in the center. Panzer grenadiers are gonna push them off. But now a big rifle push coming in from Philikim. Yeah, and those grenadiers are gonna have to retreat. Yeah, a lot of pressure from the Allies as we would expect right now. That engineer in the top forcing the MG back. The Grins are on retreat, and uh, we got a big. Big momentum for the uh, Americans now. Yeah, there's a lot of infantry on the field for them, and they're able to put on a lot of pressure. You know, normally P Grens you think would hold up pretty well against a rifle squad, but not against two. And now you see uh, Dexon sliding over to try to help Dumai hold on to this fuel point. Uh, rifles are going to try to focus down the P Grand, realize they're not going to get the kill and back up. Now a half track out. For Dumai. So this will give a combat bonus to the uh, to the DAC units nearby. Um, uh, and you got to you pointed this out. Allies doing a great job putting on a lot of pressure. Like the fight right now is over the Axis fuel, which is not how the Axis want uh, this initial engagement to go. No, not at all. It's really interesting that if you look at the map, Dexon basically lost the southern position, but now he's reinforcing troops from his base are pushing with Dumai towards the center and the top. I think that's smart. Uh, if you lose one position, you should probably try and leverage another position. So let's see what they can do. They might be able to take the top and the center. Yeah, although right now the allies have had both high munitions points. 
uh, for a couple of minutes, and I think we're going to see that play out. Billy Kim already teching grenades. Meanwhile, AAP is when IS both players, US players, when ISC have captains out. Location uh, Dexon went Luftwaffe Company is getting a flak 30, looks like. Yep. Interesting. Good call. Yeah. They need that suppression to zone out this allied infantry. Axis player is consolidating in the center. Uh, not being too aggressive with this push. Alright, now yeah. allies coming out with some mortar support. Oh, There's a lot of infantry yeah. here. He's gonna force this MG forward, interestingly enough. At the same time, looks like Dexon is gonna be pushing down. His units are low health, so he's gotta be a little careful there. Yeah, and the rifles in that green cover are not gonna be suppressed. This doesn't bode well. These pioneers are gonna take some damage. Panzer Grenadiers on the other side of the map at risk of getting wiped on retreat. Uh, but the grenade comes in too late, so they're going to get away. Half track goes down to an AT grenade. So USF player wisely teching grenades early to deal with the DAC on his side. Yeah, looks like the allies are continuing to take really good exchanges here, good trades. Um, it looks like the south remains secure. Dexon on retreat. That flak is going to try and force the jeep back, but not going to be able to hold much ground. Ooh, the jeep just barely survives there. But he's got a second jeep coming out now as well. well that's odd. Especially this late in the game. Yeah. I wonder if that was a misclick or... No, I'm sorry. That's the motor pull. I misread the icon down at the bottom. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, the, a caster misclick. <laughs> right. But the allies push, generally successful. They're able to decap that, that uh, Axis fuel. And now these rifles trying to force off the crowd shoots in. Uh, one more shot might have done it, but it looks like it's going to get away. Enemy forces have taken yep, this territory. is classic company of heroes, allies versus Axis, early game. Uh, if you look at the supplies, the allies are at quite of an advantage, 52 to 42. And then Demai has 27 to Flakim's 32. So... Um, Allies have a big momentum swing. If you look at the map, they're really starting to press into the center. Uh, and Dexon and Dumai are pushing together once again towards the top. Let's see if it works this time. Yeah. And he went for the G43 package on his Jaegers. Right? So still pretty light on AT, it looks like, uh, for the Axis. You got a flak filling out as well, which will definitely help manage some of these rifle... I don't want to call them rifle blobs, but the massive infantry that the Allies have on the field. I don't want to be yeah, disrespectful. They are doing a good job keeping their squads spread apart. Yeah, top players. Dexon's probably going for the G43 package just because he probably feels behind in terms of infantry. He wants to be able to try and scale with those riflemen as much as he can, but doing a good job of pushing in the center with that flak. Yeah, and so the Axis are going get, to get an AT gun out with the DAC, Pac-38, kind of assault package. Man, AAP doing a great job keeping his rifles in green cover so that that MG42 uh, can't really suppress. Prod shooting goes down on the north side of the map to a rifle AT grenade. Black Brilliant comes up to support. Yeah, and if I'm the allies, I'm really happy with how this is going because they've essentially kept the fight. They they own one side of the map. They're contesting the opposite side and they're just pushing on the Axis fuel here constantly. Uh, so they, at this yeah. point, don't even really need to get too aggressive. Billy Kim's getting an M24, the, the Chaffee out. They're getting an AT gun. Uh, and meanwhile, the Axis players are still kind of teching up into their mid-tier units. Yeah, and now Dumay is rotating from the top after securing it down to the middle. Big, big tempo advantage for them at this point. We have AAP on retreat. We have uh, Philly Kim on retreat as well. Or Philly Kim maybe, perhaps. And uh, they have an opportunity now to kind of take advantage of this of this center position. But at the same time, Philikim is now pushing towards the top with that M24 Chaffee. Yeah, so this will be a big play here. With the flak for Ling, it, it's always kind of a menace uh, for allied players that rely heavily on infantry. So he's got to set up an engagement with that Chaffee where he can knock out the flak for Ling. Um, I'm sure he's aware. Yep, he's seen from the flare. He sees the Pac-38 on the field. So he probably won't be overly aggressive with the Chaffee. 
No, probably just securing this high ground. Uh, I think Dume and Dexon are sticking together right now because they're undersupplied. They don't have the same army value, so they're probably going to push together as well uh, if they're going to try and take this northern position. Uh, rifle um, sprints up here to try to get the AT nade off to set up for the yep. Chaffee. Pack 38 is facing the wrong way. Flak Filling gets snared, but not critted. Now the Pack 38 refaces. Grenadiers are here for their Panzerfaust. Oh, there's no way this Chaffee survives this as long as they get the Faust off. But it looks like the Chaffee will not get the shot on the Flak Filling. Wind on the rope. field as well. Oh, an AT gun knocks out the Chaffee. Big loss for the Allies. They really needed that AT power. Captain goes down as well, and now with the Whirlwind on the field, the Allies are at risk of not having enough AT. Yeah, great teamwork by Dexon and Demi. I think the biggest mistake was AAP not pressing at the same time. He wasn't ready to flank and collapse on the position. He was he was still coming back up from his base, so missed opportunity for the Allies for sure. Yeah, and now this rifle squad might go down to the Whirlwind. It's going to chase, but I oh, one guy left. But he's going to get away. More infantry yeah. out now for uh, for Dumai. Yeah, I I really do appreciate what we have a lull in the action. How both play both teams are are really trying to play together, right? The allies are taking advantage of their manpower uh, and their field presence and kind of spreading out and applying pressure, while the Axis players are determined not to lose this fuel. And so they are playing together as a team to make sure that they can push back uh, any allied pressure on that fuel point. Yeah, it's very apparent right now for the Kim is pushing towards the north as AAP is slowly creeping up towards the center position. But the Axis are really consolidated here in the center. Oh, that's unfortunate. The mortar sets off a mine. Doesn't kill any models, but does do a bunch of suppression damage. AT gun's gonna get a free shot off on this flak filling. But it looks like the flak will get away before it takes a second round. Oh, and here we go, the Battlefield Espionage Battle Group with the Funkwagen. Nice. So he's got a Panzer Grenadier ambush here on these rifles, but they're in green cover, so they do a fair job of absorbing. Uh, allies placing a couple of mortar pits in the rear, using some of that excess manpower. And that's going to be a menace for this Flak 30 in particular. Yeah, it looks like we have Deme rotating towards the top now, seeing an opportunity where there's very few units up here in the north for the Allies. Meanwhile, the Allies are very static in the center of the map, so the Axis do have a uh, window of opportunity here. Yeah. Well, AAP is getting out a third AT gun, so it looks like he's decided his job is to defend the center of the map. Which still, it, it makes sense. Big Axis push on the north side. They're finally going to take control of this high ground. One Jaeger squad going exploring on the south side of the map, but he's about to run into an MG bunker that the Americans set up. Yeah, and as you said, AAP is going really heavy on infantry and AT guns. I think being that he went for the armored battle group, he's looking to really uh, churn out that armor into the late game. So he's banking up fuel and resources for that. Yeah. And it looks like the Axis are concerned about the potential for Allied Armor. They're also investing heavily in some AT guns here. I'd really like to see more of this Funk Bog in play. I think the ability to creep your uh, your infantry up and get a good first strike bonus might actually be really helpful for the Axis in this context. The downside, though, is uh, I think the Allies are winning. Philokim, they both have... Uh, scout squads out with the flare ability which kind of deletes that stealth um, it's a nice counterplay yeah I find it interesting how Philip Kim went for the mortar pits given that he was special operations so no pack howitzer but he did go for the anti-infantry loiter to help zone out the center and that does seem like it's their strategy to stick together in the center really zone out the center in the bottom right position or the right position and put pressure on the top forcing the axis back mm -hmm. So now you got an infantry engagement coming. Uh, Philokin making a big push here, and they're gonna run right up on this Funkwagen. Oh, and it could go down. It'll, if they focus it, yep, it goes down to the penetration from the BARs. The Panzer Grenadier's getting burned down here if they're not careful. And they do, they do uh, retreat. 
Uh, and now Dexon and Dumai are going to use their vehicles to counter this rifle push on the north side of the map. We're able to flak for on the way. Mark move. Yeah, but I wonder if this creates an opportunity for AAP to start to push through the center. He's got a Chaffee out now, multiple AT guns. And with the support from the mortar pits. Yeah, he hasn't done that yet. He's had a couple opportunities to collapse on this Axis position. He's been very, very patient, just waiting. Um, but yeah, there's it's, it's smart in one way in that it's hard to push into these positions when these... Axis units are, are basically backed up into a corner. Yeah, and he's getting a second Chaffee out, playing very motor pool heavy. Um, I assume his plan is to do the easy eight call in. Yeah, I think so too. I think he's just making sure he has enough armor in the mid game to, to counteract this purple wind and flak. Yeah, maybe we for shots coming in on the mortar pit, but don't do a ton of damage. Half-Track gets annihilated by AT coverage in the center. And now Axis also doubling down on artillery. We saw the naval warfare, and now they have an infantry support gun on the field as well. And the constant barrages from these mortar pits are going to make that really difficult to manage. Ooh. Heavy artillery yeah. called in in the center. This is the Luftwaffe sure loiter. Yeah. I, the Luftwaffe at Loiter is good because it will also target infantry. And so, yeah, that's true. if AAP isn't careful, he's going to take a couple of hits here with these squads. So, AT guns doing work against the Whirlwind, but the last shot misses, so it'll back out. Billikim sees, yeah. sees the threat and he starts to rotate down. Looks like we're setting up for a large engagement. Ooh, Grenade reads the P-Grens really well, but doesn't drop any models, just does a ton of damage. Yeah, a lot of action going on right now. A little hard to see who's ahead, but Philikim now coming down, collapsing on the flank as the Axis are trying to carve out the center position. They knocked out a bunker. They knocked out multiple um, AT and MG positions. So looks like they're doing a pretty good job overall. Yeah, those mortar pits, though, chunking down the Jaegers. Um, another naval warfare barrage coming in, trying to knock out one of these mortar pits. And I think the Axis understand they have to make this big play for the center. They're down to only 100 VPs. The allied VPs are essentially untouched. And here comes the anti-infantry loiter from Philikim. Which is a really, really nice ability in this in this patch. Oh, uh, scouts yeah. are going to get... Nope, scouts are going to get away here. Huge push by the Axis. They just knocked out two AT guns from Philikim and the mortar pit with the AT gun in the back. So... They're doing a oh, very wow. good job of being efficient here, yeah. trading. But these Chaffees on Seek and Destroy now diving in. Looks like, oh my god, they're so fast. Black oh, Furling wow. is gone, and the Werbelwind's going to go down here as well. Big pickup by AP. That's Ooh. a fantastic play, to be honest. Yeah, and you probably take the trade. One Chaffee goes down. But now the infantry push coming in on the back end, and a lot of these AT guns are going to take some hits as well. One Chaffee's going to get away. God, with all the bonuses, the flanking speed and the seek and destroy, they are so fast. And now here Great comes trade. the Wizbang. Oh. Some yeah, decent hits. Hit. Yeah, hitting just as the Axis are starting to consolidate and trying to reinforce around that med truck. They're really, really low on manpower right now. they got to be careful. The Allies are starting to swing back onto the center of the map. Yeah. And Philikim captures that north VP, so they're going to keep the VP pressure on, even if the Axis managed to decap the center. Naval's coming in on the team weapons. So the upside to all this artillery for the Axis is they have been able to push out this defensive position the Allies had set up and take control of the center. Or at least lose control of the center. Yeah. They're going to decap in the north as well. Go ahead. Yeah, much of that was their AT guns as they pushed for knocking out all the static weaponry, the motor pits, the bunkers. They did a really good job of coordinating that. But now they're going to have to deal with just an onslaught of uh, Allied Riflemen by AAP here for yeah. pushing up. Panzer Pioneers go down. Yeah, a lot of focus here on the center. Oh, and these Panzer Grenadiers are in serious trouble. Only two models left and two rifle squads with BARs on them.
Oh, but one model will get away. Meanwhile, now a Jaeger and Panzer Grenadier push coming in. And Nables onto the center VP. Naval Warfare doing a ton of damage. Rifle Squad at risk of going down. Grenade on retreat, and they do die. Very, very good play by the Axis team here. They're really coordinating together while the allies are kind of piecemeal, pushing separately and not really being able to sync up. Yeah. But Dexon now has three Naval Warfers. Oh, Whizbang Barrage comes in, clears ISG. There's a bunch of damage to the Jaeger Squad. Oh, they almost walked into the last shot there. Now Airburst Barrage coming in on the center VP as well. Dexon wisely moves his Jaegers out of the way. So the Axis are now dug in on the north VP here. Yeah, I was just going to say, they're dug in and it's very even. All supplies are 50, except AAP has 70 supplies, so pretty even game overall. Yeah. Good, good combination of AT set up as well. Chaffee takes one round as he tries to skirt around. Whizbang coming up to the north point here. I imagine it's going to try to push the Axis off to get that additional VP pressure on. Axis making a big push here in the center. Allies respond with a mortar fire and a machine gun. Man, insane that the MG shot at that Jaeger squad for a full burst and didn't suppress it. Yeah, pretty surprising. Right now we have another Whizbang coming up called in from Flickin. Looks like he's going to try and leverage these Whizbangs from the top of the map into the center. Yeah. As AAP is pushing. Airburst barrages into the center. You're going to do a lot of damage to the Axis infantry. And good rifle pushes. And now we get the Luftwaffe loiter again, combined with the Naval Warfare Barrage. The one rifle squad is in trouble. Fortunately, the loiter targets a different squad. Allies decap the center. I'm really waiting. Oh, double whiz bang on the north yeah. point. I'm really waiting for this to come in. Yeah, they they really need to coordinate these double whiz bangs in the north with their infantry pushes in the center. I feel like they're, they're a little bit disjointed in that regard. Oh man, one rifle squad gets away with zero HP remaining. Here come the Whizbang, dual Whizbang barrages. Black 30 and MG42 go down in the south. That was a little excessive. <laughs> it's kind of beautiful though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Rifle squad fighting with Grenadiers up here. And they're gonna win this engagement for sure. Now Panzer Grenadiers coming up on the flank to try to contest, or at least push off these whizbangs. The allies, yep, Panzer Grenadier is just going to stand in the circle to prevent the, the full cap. Oh, he popped the launcher off the top to create a Sherman. Oh, wow. Well, now you can't put it back on, but I guess he decided he really wanted the Sherman. Well, hopefully he doesn't lose it here. Oh, he might. He's got no health left. One more shot. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, Pack 30 knocks man. it out. But he Ouch. is going to get the cap. And now the anti-infantry loiter um, should do a lot of damage to these Panzer Grants. It's the only target they have. A little bit of a play of desperation, I feel like. Trying to maintain that VP in the north. Losing that Whizbang and Sherman. But at the same time, AAP really starting to put more pressure in the center, which which I like to see personally. Yeah, and he's coming at it from the side now, right? Oh my gosh, all these naval warfare barrages. This is insane. Captain is probably going to die on a retreat in this fire, uh, but he gets away. The Jaegers fighting with rifle squads in the middle. They're going to burn down this one rifle squad. And the allies, I think they've recognized they just need to keep the VP pressure on. If they can get a triple cap for even a, a couple of seconds, it's going to do a lot of damage. Firestorm coming in in the center, so that'll deny the allies the triple cap. Nice play. Yeah, man, that Firestorm sits for so long. Oh, pioneers yeah. get annihilated by rifles trying to decap the north. Oh, another Whizbang shot. There goes the pack. Great shot. He yep. needs to knock out that, that LEIG that 
the indirect is really doing a lot of damage into the center and into the north. And he got another whiz bang out, knocks out another pack, and that's it. That's wow. the game. All right, pretty awesome game there. Um, so I'm going to start with the build order as we usually do. Uh, granted, it's two v two, so I'm going to say a little bit more general uh, before I kick it over to Sarge for kind of the post match discussion. So starting with the Axis, you had Dexon playing as Vermacht, who chose about midway through the Luftwaffe battle group, right? So he starts with two Pioneers, which is something we're, we're seeing more of lately. Uh, two Grenadier squads and MG42. Texan into the Luftwaffe company for a Flak 30, a couple of Jaeger squads, a Warble Wind. And then he side texts to the Panzer Grenadier company, gets three Naval Warfers out, uh, as well as a Pack 40. So um, a lot of Tier 2 play, essentially, uh, mid-game play. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Uh, next, Dumai, playing as the DAC, ended up choosing the Battlefield Espionage Battle Group. Um, so some potential there for some pretty cool play. He starts with a standard Panzer Pioneer, Karad Schutzen, a couple of Panzer Grenadiers, and then he goes into the Flak for Ling, a Pack 38, um, and a couple of ISGs towards the end. Uh, what we didn't see is right at the end of the game, uh, when they surrendered, is a Tiger hit the field. So that was clearly kind of the long game play. Um, so he had his tier 4 building, but he didn't build anything from it short of the armored reserves. And then on the allied side, Philikim, uh, playing as a special operations battle group, started with two scouts, probably for the extra capping power and the, the flares and smokes, three rifle squads uh, into the ISC. Both US players played with the infantry support center of this game, which is interesting. Um, and then a couple of chaffees, uh, a couple of AT guns, and then three Sherman whiz bangs, uh, which was pretty awesome. I was a big fan, especially the jettison there at the end. Uh, and then uh, American Association president, uh, again, this is what I'm told those characters mean. I don't, I don't read Korean. Uh, choosing the armored battle group, started with a scout, an engineer, a couple rifle squads, and then a jeep. Um, and then he rolled into some team weapons, uh, AT guns, mortar, uh, HMG, before building multiple chaffees, and eventually an AA half track at the end of the game. So you imagine eventually some some uh, easy eights are coming out, but didn't get there uh, based on the way the game played out. So with that, uh, we'll go over to the the rest of the discussion. Sarge, you were saying uh, as the game was closing out, this gave you vibes of like classic Company of Heroes. Um, yeah, run that down for us. Yeah, so if you guys have been playing the game, the Company of Heroes franchise from Co. One, um, I think. It's always been the dynamic of the allies having that early game momentum, and especially the U.S. forces, right? They have that early game tempo with the riflemen, and the Axis are on the back foot until that point comes in the game where the Axis are able to kind of turn the tide with their, with their tech and their heavy armor and their elite infantry. But the allies put so much pressure to this game, and you can tell that was their overall strategy, um, was to secure the South, put a ton of pressure in the, nor in the North and Center together, and keep the axis on the back foot. And you could see the axis throughout the game. They started the game. Demai was in the top and in the center. Dexon was down in the south pushing. And they slowly started to consolidate as the game progressed because they realized they were just outnumbered, outgunned uh, on pretty much every corner. So the axis were on the back foot, teching for that um, elite infantry and those elite weapons. Uh, the allies were really invested in more of your, your mid typical early and mid-game units like riflemen, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, MGs, AT guns, mortars, whereas the Axis were just so much more interested in those late game units that scale well, like Jaegers and Nevels. Um, they were they were interested in, in a long game. You could tell from their mindset and, and the way they were uh, choosing their units. But yeah, the Axis just did not have time to come back. They were, they were trying to claw back a position for literally 24 minutes until the very end. But the Allies did a great job of keeping pressure and making sure that they were not investing too heavily in the late game because they wanted to end the game soon yeah I, I mean you're exactly right i think the way the allies approached it um basically trying to pin the axis into defending their fuel and then playing like they're almost like mid-game defenses right the the m1 at guns the mortar pits you said like compared to a naval warfare or walking stuka that mortar pits nothing but in terms of like bleeding manpower and just harassing your units and your team weapons over and over and over again uh, pretty effective uh, and I think it also mattered that the allies are basically able to take that southern VP and say like this is ours <laughs> you don't get it for the rest of the game so that's that's a huge inflow of munitions that's a guaranteed VP at least uh, you know neutrality 
Um, and I remember looking up, like, I was shocked. It was, like, the 18-minute mark. And I looked up and saw, like, 492 VPs to 100. And like, oh, man. The Axis team's, like, running out of time here. Um, and in, in that vein, I think you saw really good teamwork by both teams. So the allies knew, like you were saying, immediately, like, we have to close this out on VPs because the way that we're built is for a lot of early pressure, but we're not going to like walk into their base and destroy their armies. Like we got to close this out as fast as possible. Um, meanwhile, you saw the axis kind of shift initially like, Hey, we have to preserve our fuel point. Right. And they played together and they pushed together quite a bit. Um, very rare. You see a whirlwind and a flak for Ling attacking at the same time. Right. Um, and then they, they said, okay, this is going to get ugly. The allies are going to have a lot of, uh, like static AT, this artillery, let's tech into the artillery ourselves. So, so you saw three navels uh, out from Dexen. You saw an infantry support gun out from Dumai. Um, and then the investment into the late game armor. So like you said, uh, Axis playing for the late game, they just weren't able to, to hold on to the VPs long enough to make it there. Like normally I would say, I tell people in the cast, the biggest mistake I see people make is they rely too much on the bridging units. Like I think we saw five Chaffees get built by the allies in this game. Um, and normally that's like a that's a real risk because in real real late game units hit the field you're you run out of schlitz uh but in this case i think it worked because they had the vp control um if you're the axis players uh what do you do differently to kind of turn this game for you yeah it's a good question and and i think what was very peculiar for me to see and, and it might be to your point of the allies really putting a lot of pressure on the map and, and trying to deny these fuels as much as possible they had a larger fuel income throughout the game but I was looking for Dexon to, to churn out those P4s, and mm -hmm. I didn't see any Panzer IVs, I mean, all the way up into the 24-minute mark. He was just stuck on Jaegers and Nubbles. Um, you know, obviously, he would have loved to tech up, but he was just so forced into Tier 2. Um, I don't think he had the resources or the comfortability to do it, but I would have liked to see the Axis invest a little bit more um, into... Panzer threes or Panzer fours, ideally, um, it would have really helped, I think, uh, keep them mobile to push on two fronts or to reinforce positions a little bit faster. I just felt that they were they were on the back foot so defensively with the net. They had three nubbles, uh, LEIG, you know, two AT guns, um, actually two LEIG, so five artillery pieces. I just felt like they didn't have the pushing power um, to really carve out a position. They were just constantly trying to artillery push with their infantry but they had no way to really dig in and hold the ground um which was unfortunate the allies on the other hand really did a good job of like you said maybe over investing in the bridge units but it worked because they were able to just kind of leverage that pressure to keep that momentum to keep that axis uh army supply down um and they were smart like you said earlier on they took that south position and they held it I noticed that AAP literally had a 4x4 truck in the bottom with the reconnaissance. Uh, he, he literally had the scout commander on, so he was looking to see when the Axis would push down, and, and that way he could allocate troops down there, but yeah. um, they were very aware overall. Yeah, and I, I think back to like, like you're getting that, hey, you got the Luftwaffe company out, do you go martyrs? Right? Because the martyrs will deal with the mortars better than static AT guns will. Um, but again, like the allies weren't playing with a ton of uh, vehicles, right? Like whiz bangs in the back. You're not going to hunt them with martyrs. And then the chaffees are actually like pretty much purpose built uh, to be the martyrs in that case. So, um, yeah. And then if you go for for P4s or broom bear, um, you still got to deal with the threat of the chaffees driving around, which uh, we talked about big turning point in the match, that big chaffee flank. So you can destroy flanking speed. Um yeah, those guys motored down out of the high ground, knocked out the flak filling, knocked out the warble wind. Uh, that's that was probably devastating for the Axis uh, yeah. team at the end there. Yeah, I think like when I look at the overall strategy from the Axis, it looks like Dexon's overall goal and job was to invest heavily in tier two because he went for both the Luftwaffe company and the Panzer Grenadier company. So literally double down in tier two and i think the goal was get the elite infantry out get the artillery out like the nevels and buy time for De for demay to get into that tiger that late game tiger which literally came out at the end of the game we i don't know if we captured it but it was just called in on the map and um i would i would assume that 
Dexon's job from there was to obviously tech up and start churning out his own P4s because he had 300 fuel at mm-hmm. the end of the game. Um, so I feel like he was perhaps feeling like I just needed to carve out as much tier two tech as possible. But you're right. Like, what do you do? Werbles and martyrs are very, very, um, very, very, like, I want to say isolated units in a big map like this. They, they don't have the mobility and the turn radius to deal with chaffies, which are, which are able to just outmaneuver them in open field. So very, very tough. Yeah. And then I think about the battle group, right? So he went Luftwaffe. Um, I'm not sure when he picked it, just the, the way the overlay was, but um, like, it seems like the only ability that he used from it was the loiter, which is super powerful. Um, but I feel like there's probably some, some ground lost elsewhere. If you go mechanized, you can get out eight rods to help deal with kind of the rifle spam, some mobile pushes. You can get panthers towards the late game, which are good when they're supported. They're good counter to the Chaffee and the Whizbang. Uh, breakthrough, obviously, you get Grens with MP40 upgrades so they can tangle with the rifles a little bit better in the early game. Um, just one of those, and this happens to me all the time. I'm playing a game, and I'm like, I'm not really sure what I want to do, and there's not like a clear answer, so I end up really either not choosing a battle group or underutilizing the one that I pick. Um, so I thought that was that was kind of a, a loss there. And then, honestly, I really want to see Dume use the Battlefield Espionage battle group a little bit more. I think it was the right idea, right? Like, hey, if they're going to dig in, let me use this stealth mechanic so I can creep up. Um, but it just didn't. The Funk Falcon got caught and caught out by a flank. Uh, and then he never really reinvested into it, which makes sense given kind of how on the back foot they were. Yeah, anything else that, that you saw that you wanted to highlight for, for everyone? Yeah, just from the ally side, I, w- I would say that um, it's interesting to see uh, Phila Kim going for Spec Ops, not going for Commando, staying on those riflemen, which I think was a good call, uh, especially because he was investing so heavily in mortar pits and also the Sherman whizbangs. I mean, very, very uh, artillery-focused. Mm-hmm. And then um, really AAP was the star for the allies, in my opinion, because... I think the biggest thing that I noticed from him was just the patience. Uh, maybe a little bit too patient at times, not not collapsing with his teammate and, and pincering the axis. But the axis were pretty much forced back into a corner. Um, and it could be very dangerous to push, overcommit, and then full retreat because you're giving them momentum. So I, I think the biggest takeaway for me was AAP realizing that, hey, we're ahead. We're bleeding them on VPs. I don't need to be overaggressive, even if my teammate is being overaggressive at certain points. I need to dig in and make sure that we don't lose this ground. Um, so he was just constantly layering, adding, adding in more AT guns as he needed, um, putting pressure with the riflemen, but never having to like hard retreat completely other than a few times. Mm-hmm. And like you said, having a lot of those bridge units to make sure that he could fill in the gaps wherever he needed. Yeah, I agree with you there. The, the commandos uh, for special ops battle group, I love them. They normally come out. It's like three uh, command points if you prioritize them. So I'm glad to see he didn't rely on them kind of early on. Um, it can be a little risky to try to play for three <laughs> three command points to get mainline infantry out. Um, yeah, AAP did a great job, especially at the end there, constantly kind of coming in from the flank uh, to make sure that that center VP wasn't in access hands for very long. Uh, so that probably saved him there. Last thing I wanted to call out, I've never seen the Whizbang Jettison used in a game before. So hats off to Phil Kim. Um, for saying YOLO, launching the uh, <laughs> throwing the launcher off the top, uh, and taking a couple shots with the Sherman before it died almost immediately to an anti tank gun. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I gotta I gotta clip that and throw that on a short or something like that. Uh, Sarge, great having you on. Thanks for taking the time, man. Uh, I know you're a busy guy, uh, so really appreciate you casting this one with me. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. All right, and that's it for us, guys. Uh, we'll see y'all in the next one.